Hey guys, this is Comic You Know, and today I'm doing Comic You Know episode 94, and that's the show where I review all the comics I read this week in one show. So let's get started. We got worst pick of the week to best pick of the week, and uh, there's 18 comics this week, so kind of a normal amount, a good amount of comics. Uh, let's get started. So what was number 18? What was worst pick of the week? <clears throat> that was Thrilling Adventure Hours Presents Beyond Belief Issue 1. Um, you know, I was actually pretty excited to read this. This is based on a podcast from Nerdist. I've never heard of the podcast, but uh, I like the premise. It's like this this uh, husband and wife, they're, they're Ghostbusters in a way. But it was way too long. It was like 40 pages. And in the beginning, I was like, oh, cool. They're having a nice adventure. And then I was like, all right, get to the point. All right, I'm a little, a little bored now. <laughs> it's like, ugh. Why is this not ending? Uh, so yeah, that that's kind of why I didn't like the issue. It just felt very long uh, for the story I was trying to tell, and then I started just getting uninterested. If this was a regular 20-week page book, I think it would be a little higher, but uh, it just wasn't worth the money. It, it was just a very okay book for what it was uh, and how many pages it was. So uh, it just, yeah, got boring pretty quickly. Uh, so I gave that two stars, and that was number 18. I would say the title again, but it's just way too long. Just like the book. <laughs> uh, let's move on to number 17, which is Convergence Hawkman, issue one. Uh, yeah, this was my least favorite Convergence book this week. Um, it wasn't horrible. Uh, there's no more two-star books. It's actually got three stars. Um, it's just, the, it's not my style. Uh, I'm not a big Hawkman fan. I got it on whim to say, oh, maybe I'll become a bigger Hawkman fan um, and Hawkgirl fan. But, uh... I read some Hawk Girl in the past. I read mostly Kendra stuff, though. Um, from what I know from about Shaira, it's mostly about the Justice League cartoon. I didn't really read much of Hawkman and Hawk Girl uh, pre New 52 at all. And again, this just didn't interest me to get into the characters. It wasn't a bad story. There's actually some really interesting interaction between Hawk Girl and Hawkman. But the villains kind of bored me. I think if you like Hawkman, you like the villains, you understand the villains. I'm glad they connected the villains to uh, something that actually Hawkman and Hawk Girl are about. Uh, and also the artwork is just average. Um, could have been better. Could have had a little bit more detail. Uh, so overall I just gave Convergence Hawkman <laughs> uh, issue one three stars. It was just okay. So that was number 17. Alright, moving on to number 16, which is The Infinite Loop, issue 1. Uh, this is a, a book from IDW. Just looked interesting. It's about this girl who... I don't want to make sure... Yeah, I gave it three stars. Um, it's just about this girl who could jump between time periods and... And she can't connect to people because of it. There's like a law that you can't connect to people if you're the one of these people that jump through times or try to make other people who jump through times uh, not do the wrong thing. Uh, that's kind of her job. And then she knows this other guy that does the same thing. Seems like they're having some romance. And that's what it's about. Um, I found it a unique concept. Artwork was pretty good. But I didn't really connect to the characters. And I think that was the biggest thing about issue one. That was a disappointment. That I was like, oh, I don't know if I'll get issue two. Because the plot was interesting. And it was a unique story. But I don't really care about these characters. Uh, so, yeah. Pretty okay issue. But I say, you know, give the, give the first issue a try. See if you like the plot. See if you like the story. And this is definitely an issue just to, like, try out. Maybe you'll get issue two. But for me, I don't think I'll get issue two. Alright, moving on to number 15, which is All New X-Men, issue 40. So yeah, this is the big controversial book of this week. I had a review on my channel about it. Um, and I'll say, you know, just talking about the controversy a little, don't want to talk about it too much because I already talked about my review on Frontline Live. I will say, I didn't think it fit that well. Um, after reading Black Vortex, actually, I was like, oh, maybe it's because of Black Vortex. I'm still not sure if that's the reason or not. But uh, the reason I don't like it is because... I just didn't think Iceman was the right character. I haven't read the articles like, oh, I, there have been articles out there say, like, oh, well, Iceman is the right character. It's been there. I personally haven't seen that. Um, I didn't see it there. But um, what I didn't like about it was mostly that saying only the younger Iceman was gay and not the older one. I felt like that didn't make sense because, yes, they're from alternate universes, but they're still from the same timeline. Uh, so I was like, if you're gonna make younger Iceman gay, I don't like that you're trying to say that older Iceman's not gay. Because it's like, oh, what happened that only younger Iceman's gay? It's like, that's, it should be both characters. That's who you are. So that was the problem I had with the issue. So uh, I just didn't think they handled it right. And maybe they just didn't pick the right character. So again, I, maybe I have to read more articles. Maybe there are stuff that there were hints about this. But uh, yeah, I just didn't 
think they handled the story as well as they could. I think Marvel's handled it better in the end in the past and had some really great diverse characters in the past. Uh, like uh, I just I keep mentioning this character because I just um, read Avengers Academy, but I thought they handled it very well with Stryker. And also, if you want to talk about a character that's been um, in the Marvel universe for a while, Julie Power, I thought they did a great job with um, her sexuality. So I just didn't think they handled uh, the story as well. But it's it's an okay issue overall. Uh, I gave it three stars. If, again, if you want more information about that, I do recommend checking out my in-depth review. All right, moving on to number fourteen which is Convergence Adventures of Superman issue one. Um, this is a little lower than I expected. Um, I'm, I, I'm a big Supergirl fan. Uh, not at this time period though. Uh, I'm a bit more of a Linda Danvers fan and then right after um, Linda Danvers run, uh, the newer Supergirl run. Uh, so this, I, I am familiar obviously with this version of Supergirl, but I'm just not as big of a fan of this version. This is right before her death. Um, I like the, what I did like about this issue. I thought it was a bit un, um, a bit more unique than the other Convergence books because they're not actually under the dome. They go to the Phantom Zone where they get their powers, and then the whole dome collapses while they're not there. So I thought that was a pretty unique story. I like that, but there's a lot of babble to get to the point. <laughs> um, um, like there's a great scene where uh, Supergirl is, finds out she's gonna die. I thought that was probably the best moment in the issue. But then everything else is like babble, 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 babble. Uh, just very long dialogue, and there wasn't really a point to that long dialogue. So that was probably the part I didn't like the most. But it's still an okay issue, uh, and I like the villains a bit more here. That's kind of you're gonna see a consistent complaint about the villains throughout Convergence. But except the dome villains were like. Planet of the Apes. Who cares about them? But overall, it's an okay issue, uh, and I'm ex I'm gonna definitely pick up issue two though. So, Convergence Adventures of Superman issue one gets three and a half stars. All right, moving on to number thirteen, which is Convergence issue three. A bit higher than it usually is. Uh, you know, Convergence is so weird, <laughs> because there's half a story that I'm like, whoa, they just did that, and then the other half, I'm like, alright, what does that have to do with Convergence? <laughs> uh, so, that's, there's, I'm conflicted with this series, because I, I like half of it as, like, a story. Uh, but then I, I don't know where this is going um, in the Convergence event. Uh, so the beginning of this of this issue is all about the other Earth 2 members, uh, Green Lantern, Flash, all them, and they're just like trying to defeat Telos, and their story is pretty boring. I'm going to say that. They have a pretty boring story. That's where this, <laughs> this issue goes downhill a bit. But what I loved about this issue is actually the ending, uh, where we get to see with Dick Grayson and Thomas Wayne. Thomas Wayne dies in this issue, and Dick Grayson's paralyzed, just like his wife in another universe, um, Barbara. You know, that's obviously what she's you know, very famous for, is becoming Oracle and the killing joke. And they play that in the end of this issue. I was like, whoa, I didn't expect them to go there. Uh, so, yes, they have some great moments with that, and I think if the beginning was better, and if this connected with Convergence better, this would definitely be a lot higher, because that's an awesome scene. But, uh, there's a lot going against Convergence at the same time. So, for me, I gave Convergence issue three, three and a half stars. There's some really awesome scenes here, but there is a lot bogging down, uh, Convergence, and I feel like they don't have direction for this event, and I hope they find one soon. Alright, moving on to number twelve, which is... Convergence, the Teen Titans, issue one. Uh, a little lower than I expected to, uh, but I feel like this was a bit repetitive because we already had the Titans story, and now we're getting another new Teen Titans story. And I, I mean, <laughs> you could say this about Batman, you could say this about Flash, you could, there's a lot of characters that are repeated, but why I target Teen Titans is because I'm more of a second generation Teen Titans fan, so I love Cassie, Tim, you know, that's my favorite, Connor. Um, Bart, and uh, we didn't get to see a story with them, um, either a Young Justice story or just a team story of Teen Titans, and I, I think that's why I like, have a bad taste in my mouth to see, you know, the new Teen Titans. I kind of want to see the second generation, too. Um, but this issue is pretty good. Uh, we get to see Donna's m missing her love, um, and then other lovers uh, having fights, <laughs> uh, so that's fun. But also, they, they focus so much on the villain, which is the Doom Patrol from another universe, and you're going to see, again, the consistency of uh, my Convergence reviews where I'm like, where the hell did they get these villains? It's like, they pop out of nowhere. That They don't have a connection to these characters. So they focus so much on the, the new Doom Patrol, but they have no connection. So it's less interesting. Um, 
Let's talk about Titans for a second. Titans, they had a connection. Even though the villain didn't have a connection, uh, they had Roy see Leon. It's like, do you want to see Leon? Yeah, I want to see Leon. Well, you gotta kill these two, your two friends. Uh, if you want to see your daughter, that's a connection to the villains. Like, oh, that's a great cliffhanger. Um, same for uh, Superman. Convergence Superman did the same thing. A very well connection to the villain. But most of the Convergence titles have no connection at all. And with this issue, they focus so much on the villains that have no connection. It's like, I want to go back to the Teen Titans. I want to see that story, not the Doom Patrol. Um, from another universe. At least if it was the Doom Patrol, the regular, like Rita, I was like, at least she's connected the Beast Boy. Uh, it's like the the Doom Patrol that's connected nobody. Uh, so yeah, that was my complaint about it. But there are some great character moments, with, especially Donna Troy and um, Nightwing and Starfire. They have some great moments in this issue. So that's why I did enjoy it. And um, Artwork is very good for the story, too. Fits very well. So, overall, I gave uh, the New Teen Titans uh, issue one, three and a half stars. Alright, I think we're up to number 11. <clears throat> yes, we are. Number 11 is Hulk, issue 15. Very solid issue. I thought this was an improvement from last issue. The last issue was very uh, repetitive. It was just fighting. A very quick read. Here we get a lot more story progression. And it's sad to say that issue 16 is the last issue of this Hulk volume. And I've been loving this Hulk volume. I have not loved Hulk in a really long time. And I think Dugan's just doing a, a wonderful job with the character. So with this issue, it's um, Red Hulk against Doc Green. But also you get to see some... Um, feature of Bruce Banner. We see him again and uh, you know he has to turn back into Hulk to survive so Doc Green's back. Uh, and by the end of the issue uh, Red Hulk is cured but um, now it's gonna be the Avengers have, or just the whole Marvel Universe having a discussion with Doc Green and Doc Green says I'm dying which I, I'm pretty sure we, we already knew that. Um, so the next issue we'll find out what happens but that was a very solid issue. Again there's just more character moments here um, just a lot more happening here. Um, a great battle between Red uh, Red Hulk and Hulk also. So, solid issue. Hulk issue 15 for me gets four stars. Alright, moving on to number 10. Yes, we are up to number 10, which is... Convergence, the Green Lantern Corps issue 1. I was not expecting to like this issue as much as I did. Uh, I got this one more at whim. I was like, ah. We'll see if I like it or not. I like Green Lantern overall, but, you know, I did not read Green Lantern before... I would say before... I read a lot of Jeff Johns' run, but before that I've never really read Green Lantern. I was never a fan. Um, so I read a lot of Jeff Johns, and I wasn't... I didn't know what to expect with this. And uh, honestly, I really enjoyed it. I, I love that it was uh, in Guy Gardner's point of view, uh, after he gets out of his coma, and uh, him hating on Hal. It's very... If you're a Guy Gardner fan, you get to see him very much in character here. And uh, Hal's away. He's trying to figure out how to put the dome down. And, and he, they're supposed... Uh, Carol and Hal are supposed to get married. Carol's like, I have no idea where he is. He's been gone for six days. He can't, he can't even go into space, but he's been gone for six days. Um... So I, I thought that was interesting. I thought Carol could have been a little bit stronger as a character here, but she was so strong in Suicide Squad already. Um, I'll forgive this issue for Carol not being as strong as she should be, but it was also like the time period, so I understand why um, she was maybe a little bit of a weaker character here. Um, but overall, really enjoyed it. I, I, I really liked Guy here. He was great. Um, and then just the interaction between the core members, and that's obviously the most important part of Green Lantern Core, is seeing the three core members interact with each other. And it's a good cliffhanger, too, where we get to see how, I mean, how doesn't allow Guy ha to have, um, the lantern ring. And Guy's like, well, I don't need a lantern ring. I'll just, you know, do my own thing. And he goes on a bike and he's gonna go against Hal. Uh, so I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a very good issue. And this is how you do a Green Lantern core issue to, to get all three of them together. And they did a good job. So I gave this a solid four stars. Alright, moving on to number... We're up to number nine, which is... <clears throat> Maze Experiment, issue 17.1. Uh, this is another very solid issue this week. Uh, I really like what um, Jerry Conway has been doing with Wrath. I think Wrath is a character who doesn't get enough screen time or panel time. Um, and she she's actually getting a whole mini or I won't say mini series because like technically not a mini series, like a story arc, whatever they're doing. They're, they're numbering it really weird, and, you know, five years from now, it's going to be really hard to find this book, but, because uh, it's like 16.1, 17.1, 
they should just make this a mini series, but that's a different complaint. Um, <laughs> but going on, uh, I really like what they're doing with Wrath with this issue. I like this moral dilemma she's having of, and there's also this this conscience of uh, of she's a police officer and. She doesn't agree with the law. She doesn't believe the law can do anything. So that's why she she turned into Wrath. And she doesn't care if the villain dies. And, is, and of course, in a Spider-Man book, you know, Spidey's like, oh, well, you can't think that. With great power must also come great responsibility. Um, you have to care even for the villain. You have to help them. And it's like this different dynamic. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, so very solid issue. The plot doesn't really um, progress that much here, but there's a lot of great character moments. So the Maze Experiment, issue 17.1, for me, gets a solid four stars. All right, moving on to number eight, which is Effigy issue four. Um, really interesting Tim Seeley... Uh, creator own book. I, I love Tim Seeley's work with especially his creator own stuff. I love Revival. Been really enjoying Epigy here. And uh, this issue just continues more of the plot of um, our main character, um, I can't think of her name. Sean, I can't, I can't think of her name right now. It starts with a C-H. Anyways, our main character, who used to be a star, she goes to a convention of um, what her TV show used to be, which is Space Cops, and uh, she finds out what this like this whole convention is about, and she's trying to figure out who who th this killer. They're they're looking for a killer of a dead body they found in issue one, and they have to go to this convention to find the the clues. Um, so yeah, and it, it's a it's a pretty interesting issue to you definitely get some more clues in this issue and uh, more celebrity culture uh, commentary uh, which I thought was the best part here. I love the ending. There's just this monologue, this documentary style um, or a reality star, uh, reality show type style um, discussion where our main character is like after I saw this person die, he, this guy commits suicide, uh, he says this, this, these lines like this is a TV show. Like, I'm living a TV show. And I thought that was really interesting because she's a celebrity. She's trying to find her own way, but she, she feels like her life is fake. Uh, so it's I love the commentary with this book. And it just keeps giving us even more interesting commentary on celebrity life, Hollywood. Uh, and even with the mother here, you know, the mother wanting her, wanting her daughter to... Um, they get a, to get another TV show and she'll do anything for it. So... What is anything she would do? Would she kill somebody to do it? Who knows? <laughs> I it could be the mother, honestly. Uh, I and that's the mystery, and I, I'm really intrigued by it. So I gave Effigy issue four four stars, and I'm very intrigued to see where the series goes. All right, moving on to number seven. Yes, we're on to number seven, which is the Little Mermaid issue three. I've been loving this miniseries by uh, Meredith Finch. I am a huge Little Mermaid fan, as you guys know, and uh, I think she's doing a great spin on what we know from Disney, you know, what we know about the Little Mer Mermaid myths. It's just, it's so good. Uh, and with this issue, we, we learn a bit more about Erica, and also we get to see her parents meet up again in present time. And uh, the sea urchin, uh, you know, the sea queen, um, you know, she's trying to gamble. She's, she's trying to get her own deals in this issue. Uh, and what, what, what lengths will the parents go to to find their daughter? Um, and uh, I, there's a lot of tension in this issue, a lot of great suspense, especially towards the end where Erica tries, tries to escape. Uh, so, very solid issue, and I've been, like I said, been really enjoying this one, and I like the spin that Meredith Finch is uh, really taking this series, uh, and the characters are very interesting, and you really like them from the first issue. So, and I, I've actually, um, Serenity Q uh, got me the the Little Mermaid story, the, the original Little Mer Mermaid story before this miniseries, so I'm very excited to read that too. Um, uh, it's been, a, I'm trying to find time to read it, but I'm, I'm, it's on my list to read and I'm very excited to read that because I, I really enjoyed this story and want to learn more about Erica in general. Alright, moving on to number six, which is Convergence Wonder Woman, issue one. Kind of shocked that Wonder Woman's so high up. I'm not a huge Wonder Woman fan, but it's great to see Steve Trevor back and um, Diana again. Uh, and it's cool because we get to see what happens when people are stuck in a dome, stuck in um, this this routine of the dome. Um, there's cults, there's religions that start uh, popping up, and there's a religion that believes Diana is, uh, you know, 
believes in pagan gods, which she does, but, um, and that's, that's a bad thing. And she's a demon because, because she believes in pagan gods, um, and she's part of that universe. So they want to kill her. <laughs> and, uh, of course, this is, this is as the dome is falling down, and, uh, we get villains that come in that want to save their own world, and they're vampire versions of our villains, uh, our bad villains. We have Joker... Catwoman and uh, Poison Ivy, who are vampires and want to kill Steve, and uh, already did kill all those cult people. Uh, really great artwork. I, I gotta say, I really enjoyed this. First, the artwork's really good. That that's what I think really drew me into this story. And then, again, this interesting premise of cults starting to form during Convergence, uh, because they need it. It's, uh... They need to believe in something. Uh, they need to believe that they're going to be saved. I thought that was really interesting, and, and it was a really solid issue. I was very surprised by this one, and pretty good villain, too. Uh, again, it doesn't really connect to Wonder Woman, but at least it connects a bit. Like, mythology, monsters, okay. I could connect that a bit more than the other ones. It's great to see Steve and uh, Diana work together. I uh, love that. I love that opening scene. I think that's what really got to me. I was like, ah, they're back together. I love it. So, uh, Converge's Wonder Woman issue one for me gets a solid four stars, and uh, I was pleasantly surprised by it. All right, moving on to number five. Convergence Justice League of America issue one. Sue is back. Uh, Sue Dibney is back. I... Uh, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of Identity Crisis. Uh, it's my favorite event, my favorite story arc, and I actually just wrote a paper on it <laughs> for school. Uh, and I just really love it. I think it's great. And I, I love Sue char Sue's character and Ralph's character, right, you know, after reading that. I was like, whoa, you know, these kind of, especially Ralph, the C-list hero, um, becoming a fan favorite uh, because of Identity Crisis. And you, you feel for him, you know his character well, and their marriage, their relationship is just great. You, I love that I love that you can see how much they love each other. And that's what I enjoyed about this issue. But what I loved about this issue actually is uh, that this whole issue is through Sue's eyes. It's through Sue's narration. Um, and, you know, um, saying, oh, well, I want to see Ralph obviously save our world, but I'm a little scared because we don't have the heavy hitters here. We have the Detroit Justice League. Are they good enough? Um, and then we get to see the, some random <laughs> villains who want to fight them, the Secret Six of another universe. Um, and Sue's witnessing all this. So, honestly, the only negative I have about this issue, again, is the villains. They don't really connect to, uh, to the Justice League of America. But what made the issue for me is Sue and Ralph. And Sue is a main portion of this whole issue. And great, great artwork. You just open up the page, you get to see a wonderful page of Sue and Ralph there. So... I just loved it. It was really great to see Sue and Ralph back together and Sue alive, so that was good. Uh, so Just League of America issue one for me gets uh, solid four stars. Alright, so now we're moving on to number four, which is Convergence Flash issue one. Um, this is really well done, and this is my last Convergence book on my uh, on my. Countdown. Uh, so this is my favorite Convergence book of the of the week. I, I love the narration and the artwork was beautiful too. I think it just fit the story so well. Um, here's some great examples here. Just wonderful, wonderful artwork. But again, what really got to me is the narration. Opens up with Barry's like, oh, hey, honey. Hey, Iris. Oh, wait, she's not here. I keep forgetting that. So it's that moment is like, oh, Barry doesn't have his happily ever after. He doesn't have Iris. And this whole issue really is about him missing Iris. And I love that. Uh, I love Barry and Iris together, and uh, I miss that in the in the New 52. Um, I, I wish Iris was in this issue, but, you know, it's it's still great to see how Barry loves Iris. You know, there's so many opportunities, like, oh, well, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to be here. You know, I don't know how long I'm going to see Iris, but I still love her. And there's an opportunity where you end up being with somebody else. Like, no, I don't want to be with anybody else. I want to be with Iris. Um, so I love that. And there's this wonderful narration throughout the whole book. Um... But the, the only thing that I didn't like about the issue was the last page. Uh, and that's the random villain. Uh, the random villain is that, um, what he said, and I think, I think that I am the Superman. So it's like Superman from another, <laughs> another universe. And, uh, guess what Barry says? You're the who? Because he's not connected to him at all. <laughs> and you know what? They had an, oppor an opportunity to do Kingdom Come. Well, I mean, 
I know they're probably not connected to this. I don't know how they're working that out. So Kingdom Come, I think, was in the first week. But, hey, they had an opportunity. Why couldn't we just see, like, Iris Allen? Why couldn't we see the Flash of Kingdom Come? It reminds uh, Barry of Iris. It would be a great villain to go against. But, no, instead we have to have a random villain. So that was the only thing that ruined the issue for me. But overall, the actual issue, the, 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 the most of the issue was great. Great narration. If you're a Barry Allen fan pick this up. Very well done. So I gave that four stars. Alright, moving on to number three. Postal issue three. Uh, I've been pleasantly surprised by this series. The first issue I was like, eh, not sure. as an interesting premise, but I'm still not sure about it. Issue two really impressed me. Issue three impressed me even more. We get to learn a little bit more about Maggie and her story. Maggie's the waitress at, um, at this town and the town is like full of villains they're full, of, full of bad people but somehow there's never been a crime and we don't know much about this place but they're all bad people and our main character has autism and uh, he's trying to really navigate this whole world of his uh, and it, it's a really interesting perspective um, of him and I, I really enjoy the diversity of the book seeing a different point of view um, but going back to it what I really enjoyed is learning more about Maggie Maggie supposedly just went to jail because uh, she um, sold weed or she you know took weed It's like oh well that actually didn't happen I was ahead of this this whole drug ring uh, and she sold heroin it was she was let's say she killed a lot of people so she was a lot bigger of a villain or bigger of a criminal than we thought uh, and she's like, I had to be this nice girl, and I had to work with the FBI to, you know, get out of jail. And she wanted that. Now, now she just has sex with the FBI agent, but because the FBI agent doesn't really care about this place anymore. But it was a really interesting twist on Maggie's character, because, because in the first issue, we get to see Maggie as this normal person. She's like, oh, that, you know, is very nice to our main character. And now we get to see that she's not really a nice person, but... Like, she's very interesting and twisted, so I really enjoyed her origin. And then just going back to, um, now our main character's origin, uh, finding out the person who died was his sister, um, and, uh, his father kidnaps him and says, well, I only killed her because it reminded me too much of, uh, your mother, so I just killed her. Uh, she was weak anyways, but I want you to be like me. And, uh, he's getting beat up, uh, and, and his mother obviously didn't want, um, him to even go near the father, but... Just a lot of interesting twists and a lot of great character stuff in this issue. So, overall, this is probably the best issue of Postal I've read so far, and it's getting me totally interested in this series. So, Postal Issue 3 for me gets a 4.5 stars. I was very, very um, intrigued by this issue. Alright, moving on to number 2, <clears throat> which is... Guardians of the Galaxy, issue 26. I don't think Guardians of the Galaxy has been on my top five in a really long time. Uh, but Guardians finally found a direction, um, again, and that's Star-Lord being elected as president, um, and him dealing with it, because he didn't know he was, and him, um, you know, being, um, being, uh, in a relationship with Kitty and himself, and they are now fiancés to each other. So that's really cool to see them kind of, like, plan what to do with their wedding and you know kitty saying well i'm jewish and you're not so that's good it might be a problem with my mom so it's actually just referencing our parents again it's been such a long time to see since we've seen our parents so i hope we get to see them uh i really want to see how they interact with all that and also you know her not really dealing with her new powers but you can see like she has like some of the phantom powers the way they do the art so uh, i'm excited to see how they deal with that um now she's in a mini series she's gonna be in guardians legendary um and we'll see after secret wars what's gonna happen but I really enjoyed that. I actually really, it sold me. Um, I will say that the whole proposal sold me with this issue. At first I was like, ah, I don't really know what to think about it. They don't really know each other, blah, 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 blah. But then when I read this issue, I'm like, they're happy. And I, I really enjoyed that. So this issue kind of sold me on their, on their marriage. And you know, Kitty has some really great moments in this issue also, but... Uh, it's, it's just a really interesting arc finally happening in Guardians. I feel like Guardians just didn't know what direction it was going, and finally it knows. Star-Lord's being elected for something, and then the other Guardians are, um, might be on the council, and then what, is, what, what are they gonna do after, you know? Uh, so yeah, I enjoyed this issue a lot. I think my only complaint was the cliffhangers, like, oh, well, what's go- it's like, uh, what the hell is that? And they have, like, this blank- red sky. I was like, oh, okay. That, that was an okay cliffhanger. So, that was probably my only complaint. But overall, 
very good issue, and it, it's making me excited about Guardians of the Galaxy again. And awesome artwork, too. That was what was also really great, was the art. Love the artwork. So, um, Guardians of the Galaxy issue 26 gets four and a half stars for me, and that was number two. Alright, so what was pick of the week this week? And that was Black Vortex Omega uh, issue one. Uh, I really enjoyed this issue, and I gotta say I like Black Vortex's event in general. It's one of, it's one of the better events from Marvel in a really long time, and just one of the better events in general from comics I've read in a while. And yes, I am comparing it to Convergence too, but... What I really enjoyed about this is, first of all, lots of character development. People having to decide, do I take the Black Vortex power or do I not? Do I keep it? Um, and some people do. Kitty ends up keeping it. Um, and then some people don't. Groot doesn't keep it. Beast doesn't keep it. Iceman doesn't keep it. And uh, Cyclops doesn't keep it. Uh, people that do keep it is Gamora, Kitty, and um, Angel. They end up keeping it. And I'm excited to see the consequences of both, of not keeping it, because there are consequences, uh, and of keeping these powers. So I was excited about that. So I thought that was very cool. And uh, yeah, it was just a really interesting story. And of course you get to see that cliffhanger of Star-Lord and Kitty getting married. At first, like I said, I wasn't sure what to think about the proposal. But in the end, you realize they went through so much and they just want to be happy. They, they've seen the world and they're like, well, we have each other. We, we do like each other and we do love each other. I think we should get married. And I was like, all right, it's a little fast. But uh I understood it a bit more. Um, after it's like, all right, after these events, it's understandable. They've seen a lot. Um, they've seen a lot of, of each other. And then Kitty saw, you know, being in love with him and seeing that world. So she's like, all right, I can accept that. <laughs> uh, so it's great just to see Kitty happy because it's been a while since Kitty's been happy, especially in space. Uh, so, and also the artwork was beautiful for the issue. It's just a really great event in general. So uh, Black Vortex for me. Got four and a half stars. I really enjoyed the issue. And that was my pick of the week. Hope you guys enjoyed. This is Comic You Know and Comic Frontline. Tell me in the comments below what was your worst pick of the week, your best pick of the week, and everything in between. And of course, I'll have uh, another episode, Comic You Know episode, next week. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also, description below, there's links for my comic book, Like Father Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page of Like Father Like Daughter. I'll see you guys later.